we're going to talk about two kinds of stereoisomers. And uh, the first one is geometric isomers. But just so you know, stereoisomers have the same formula, the same bonding pattern, but different spatial arrangement of the atoms. I know, exciting. Uh, and the geometric isomers are going to be called cis and trans isomers. That's another working name for them. Um, and they exist because of the rigidity of the double bond, which creates two different spatial arrangements. Uh, I've got two butene here, and uh, we don't talk about why it's called two butene, uh, but I will tell you it is because the ENE -E ending means that there's a double bond, and the two means that it's starting at the second carbon. And whether you start from one, two on this end counting, or one, two on this end, it is still two butene. So let me draw. Uh, this is going to be one, two, three, four with a double bond in the middle. That's how you draw two butene as a skeletal or line bond structure. And there are actually two geometric isomers. That's one of them. And I'll show you. So that's the one I just drew. I don't know which one it looks like on the video versus the screen. So let's, I think that's it. And then same thing, just rotated. But then if I actually break a bond and put it back together, we can see that the bonding pattern, meaning the description of the bonds, which is there's a carbon single bonded to another carbon. There's a double bond and then a single bond to another carbon. That's the same no matter what way we do it. That's what we mean by the bonding pattern is the same, but different spatial arrangements because we've got this, uh, uh, we cannot move that double bond. So we have to actually break it. And whenever you break something, break a bond, put it back together and you get a new thing that is a different molecule. And uh, so let me draw this now. That's this one, still four carbons, still a double bond between the second and third carbon. And this one's called trans. Uh, and I'll write out the whole name, trans to butene. That's this one here. And the one that I'm holding in my hand that is on the right on the page is called cis to butene. And uh, I don't know how you are planning on remembering it, but uh, when I was taught, the cis one actually looks like a letter C, or it also looks like a cup. So those are ways to remember that this is cis. Um, and then the other way to remember, uh, for trans, you can remember that the two carbons are transported as far apart from each other. That's a fine way to do it. Um, I don't know. Uh, it is in the zigzag pattern here almost, it looks like, but trans for me, that works. I will also say there's a hole here and a hole here. There are also H's in these spots. And remember, we don't usually draw H's, but we can if they help us. And you can see that the H's are also trans to each other in the trans species. And the H's are also cis to each other in the cis species. And that's another way of uh, thinking about it. Again, we don't usually draw the H's, but we can when they help us. Another example would be 1,2-dichloroethene. And we don't do naming of things with double bonds in them, but we can start to see how this is going to work. This is going to be, so, so there's, uh, oh, ethene. Oh, what am I doing here? Sorry about that. So this is ethene. So when in doubt, go back to two carbons. There's almost not a, um, skeletal structure to draw for this. I guess there is, but then you put Cl, Cl, H, and H. So that's 
the one two is on the number one and the number two carbons of which there are only two in this molecule. And can you guess which one this one is, cis or trans? I'll draw the other one. And the one on the left is cis, and the one on the right is trans. Because again, the chlorines and the one on the right, and we can write, you can just write cis or trans, or you can also put the dash there because there would be a dash. So cis dash one comma two dash dichloroethene or trans dash. Okay. And just to be clear, there is no cis trans for one, two, dichloroethane. That is something we could ask you to draw and uh, based on the name or take the, na the skeletal or uh, Lewis structure and name it. And so that's going to be, uh, ethane is going to be two carbons connected by a single bond. Okay. Then on the one, we're going to have a Cl. And on the two, we're going to have a Cl. Then since each of these carbons has two bonds, we're going to then have two more bonds to hydrogens. And if we were doing the Lewis structure, we could just draw them in. But since... Uh, now we'll draw a little bit of a shape too. So there's two H's down here. There's two H's down there. This is, uh, each of these carbons are tetrahedrally based. So they have out and back wedges while they also have the CL bond, C bond, C bond, CL. That is in the plane of the piece of paper. Anyway. So remember, no cis and trans for single bonds. That's because this bond can rotate. And even though it looks like those two CLs are on the same side, when that single bond rotates, well, we can hold it one constant while the other one rotates, or we can rotate both of them. But both of those CLs are rotating. And on average, they rotate so that there is no difference. There's there's just no cis trans. And that's why we emphasize that it is the rigidity of the double bond, which allows the top two, the one, two dichloroethene to have two different geometric isomers, cis and trans.